Okay, hello everybody on YouTube. So today I wanted to just update you guys on the perfumes I've been enjoying lately. I recently went on a trip to Washington and I'm going to be moving there next month. So uh, this will probably be the last video I do here and I'm really excited. Um, but I'm also like trying to figure out how I'm going to get all of my perfumes sent like pretty much across the country um, so that I can still have them. I'm a little nervous about that. But yeah, let's just get into what I've been into lately. Normally I would save this for the end, but I feel like it just, let's just begin with it because it is my new favorite perfume. Um, not like, it's like in my top favorites. So like there's Hypnotic Poison, there's Dior Addict. Both of those are like perfumes that are like, I feel soul bonded to that I just deeply, deeply love and will always have in my collection. Um, they're like the only ones I can say that about. And I've now found another one where I really just am obsessed with it. And just the smell of it makes me feel, it just makes me really happy and just I always feel so good wearing it. Um, and it's one that I didn't expect to like as much as I did. Um, but it's Angel Share by Killian. Um, this is one that's gotten a lot of hype on YouTube and TikTok. You know, it wasn't one that uh, intrigued me that much. Like, okay, boozy apple pie uh, is tends to be people's descriptor for it and literally that is what it gives it's this really yummy delicious kind of apple pie smell with this kind of boozy after note to it whenever I ask other people like what does it smell like to you and the first thing they always say is cinnamon so it has that going on. It's super strong. It lasts forever. You literally, all you need is like two sprays. It's a very heavy, thick, dense perfume and it's just delicious. Oh, I love it. I think it's really, really decadent and a little sultry. It's very, very much a winter fragrance, but I fall in love with it during the summer and I've been wearing it during the summer. The next perfume I want to talk to you guys about is one that I've been lusting over for such a long time and just dying to try it. I would just obsessively go on Fragranica and read the reviews about it and was just so curious and intrigued and it's Petite Fraca. I've smelled the original Fraca because that's one of the samples Fruit Truly sent me and loved it. Um, that's one I eventually want to have in my collection. And it's just this gorgeous, iconic tuberose that's a little dirty. And I feel like it really holds up and smells really good even now. But it's just such a classic, sexy, like bombastic perfume. And I love, I love that genre of perfume. I love tuberose. I've somehow found out about Petite Fraca. Uh, I might have just seen it on one of the websites and then looked it up on Fragranica and was like, what's what's going on with that? Um, and it's essentially supposed to be kind of a more modernized Fraca. So I think this still is a very interesting perfume. It's not boring. It I feel like it's still a, weird in its own way. The way that I would describe the OG Fraca is like big bombastic tuberose and but it doesn't smell photorealistic. It smells an exaggerated tuberose. Think of like how alien doesn't smell like to me when I think of like an actual jasmine flower or the smell of like photorealistic jasmine, I don't think of alien. I think of alien as like a cartoon hardcore, crazy, drugged out interpretation of Jasmine. And I would say for Cobb, I think fits the same bill. And it's a little, there's a little bit of a mustiness to it and a sweatiness to it. it makes me think of like being in like a very humid hotel room and just I don't know, like 
like a really like kind of shady one, but it's, I don't know, like it's a vibe. I still smell OG for caught in this. All of the reviews I saw, they were like, it doesn't smell like OG for caught at all. It's completely different. To me, that tube rose is so specific to Fricot. I've never smelled that kind of tube rose in anything else. Um, to the point where like, I don't even know if I'd be able to, if I didn't know it was like an iconic tube rose fragrance, I wouldn't necessarily be able to say like, oh, that's tube rose. Um, but it certainly makes sense. This one still has that, like there's even like this, there's like maybe almost like plastic equality to it. The difference is that this has pear in it. So it has this addition of pear. Pear's not like my favorite. I feel like it's kind of a boring note generally, like doesn't excite me a lot, even though Labelle is a pear perfume that I am absolutely adore. But this one works. It is like this really nice, fresh pear note mixing with that kind of weird plasticky tuberose that you get from Fraca, but it's cleaner. It's It doesn't have like the mustiness of that one. Like it has the edges shaved down for sure. And then there's a, a sweetness from the pear. Uh, this also has a note of cacao in it. And especially I think as it dries down, you get more of that kind of warm sweetness from it. The pear and the tuberose, especially in the beginning, do have this kind of um, almost stringent quality to them. There's something weird and kind of off-putting about it. I don't know, it feel, it, it's a good solid perfume that does still feel complex and interesting in its own right. But it also isn't what I expected necessarily. Like a lot of the reviews I read about this made me think it was going to be this really trashy, um, girly like perfume that smells like you're like a woman going to the clubs in the 2000s and you're wearing Juicy Couture and you just like all of that really tacky 2000s imagery is kind of the way a lot of people talked about this and and it was also what made me so excited about it because I think for me the reason I, I get so excited about like 90s clubbing perfumes and perfumes that were more like kind of uh, popular in the 90s and early 2000s is because I just love that era, it just is something that, I think being a kid then and kind of looking up to like women at that time, I think that's something like that will always be like kind of near and dear to me. And like, I wish that I could have been in my twenties then. So I was kind of hoping that this would really embody that quality for me. And it, you know, this is fun. But it doesn't make me think of that specifically. It doesn't make me think of like a trashy 2000s fragrance. But it is really nice and I feel like it is good for occasions like that. But there is something about it that I, I can't deny that I was a little disappointed because I had such a vivid picture of it in my mind already. But like the more I continue smelling it, like I feel like it's still a really interesting, nice perfume and it isn't, it's definitely not boring and I'm excited to kind of continue living with it. There is a part of me that is like, hmm, I kind of wish I would have just got the OG for Ka because that one is so just, it's just perfect. Like, and it's one I want in my collection. And it is a very, when it comes to like a lot more of like the vintage fragrances, I feel like that's one that I would enjoy wearing like regularly and feel like it would be less about just having it to have it. And it's one that I would actually get a lot of use out of um, because I think that's one that still smells good, but. It, it, it is edgy and weird, especially for now. Um, 
but this one is a little bit too it's it's like edging that line okay the next one i want to talk about is one that i've been wearing a lot and it was kind of an impulse purchase um it's eilish by billy eilish first of all i just want to say this bottle to me is so pretty i love it it feels it's like really gorgeous and elegant but it's also kind of not elegant and it is a little trashy and I, I really like that about it and it's just gorgeous and it's heavy when I smelled it though I was like oh okay that's nice but it didn't really wow me a lot of people compare it to warm vanilla sugar and at the time I was like yeah it kind of just feels like a slightly revved up warm vanilla sugar this is one I like always smell whenever I go to Ulta and it started to grow on me the more I smelled it. One time I wore it and things about it started kind of coming to the surface for me that made it feel really, made it feel more interesting. Um, Cause I would say that this is just, it's a really nice, simple, wearable vanilla perfume. Like ultimately that's what it is. Um, but it has ginger in it which gives it this slight kind of fizziness and maybe slight earthy quality that I really, really like. And also the vanilla in here isn't, to me, doesn't smell gourmand. This doesn't smell gourmand to me. It smells like a very waxy vanilla, almost kind of candle-y, but it's really warm and pretty. And I feel like the ginger gives it a little bit to make it feel I, I I don't know like that fizziness makes it not feel super heavy and it, it it doesn't feel like too rich or anything or too sweet it's it's just like a nice waxy light vanilla that you can kind of just bathe in and it's warm and comforting um it's still whatever it's still like a basic vanilla perfume and it also feels to me for like a celebrity perfume at Ulta that you know a lot of like teenage girls are going to be buying it it feels somewhat elevated I it's not that kind of like candy sweet vanilla that you're going to get from a lot of like Ariana Grande perfumes and whatnot because it really to me I don't think it's sweet at all this one has really grown on me and and I really like it. And I love this bottle. I think it's so weird. I love that half of the head's cut off too. It's really creepy. Like what the fuck? We love that. Yes, we do. The next one I want to talk about is the perfume I wore the most when I was in Washington. I mostly, I think I only brought like travel sprays and stuff. And the one that I got the most use out of was Blanche Bet. Um, I've talked about this a lot. It's like a creamy, milky, coconut almond scent. It's really good. Oh my God. Whenever I smell it, it this one also just makes me feel really happy. There's a, something bright about it and the way like the coconut and almond mix. It doesn't smell like suntan lotion, but it's still, you can tell that it's coconut there's still this slight kind of tropical vibe to it and it is super super creamy it's very strong and long lasting um, but somehow it still feels very bright and like a perfume I would that that I really enjoy wearing in the summer that I don't feel like is too cloying for the summer weather and it still smells interesting I feel like um, I really like that genre of like coconut, vanilla, almond, you know, as a lover of hypnotic poison. De Terre Noir is one that I've sampled and I really want to get a bottle of that eventually. I think if you like fragrances like those, um, this is one worth checking out. Um, and it doesn't smell like those, even though, you know, I feel like you could definitely put it in the same family. More so with Datura Noir, because I feel like Datura Noir also has this kind of bright, happy quality to it. And it, it, it also is like a really good perfume for like summer. Whereas Hypnotic Poison feels a little bit like 
thicker and more and, and darker and more distant, you know? This is just like, just really happy and, and just gorgeous and delicious. And to me, it, without being too sweet or too cloying, I don't even know if I would call it gourmand. I feel like you could, but it's not gourmand in a way where you can like pinpoint the, yum, the food that it tastes like. It's just sweet and creamy and delicious, but it's not like, like Lyra is like photorealistic, lemon pound cake, vanilla, heavy, thick. It's really yummy, but I feel like that level of gourmand can be a little um, not ideal for the summer. Um, and this isn't like that. It's just the perfect scent for when I was in Washington, when I was in Seattle by the beach, you know, it just kind of felt perfect. And it to me, this is a really easy reach. It's one that I feel comfortable wearing every day. Um, to me, it doesn't feel like like super like sexy or there, there's nothing like sensual about it to me. It just feels happy. I don't know, it's hard to explain. The next one I'll talk about is one that I first smelled when I was in Washington. I was so excited to see that Washington has Nordstrom. Uh, where I live in the Midwest, so we don't have stores like that. Like we have like Macy's, but we don't have Nordstrom, you know, I was like, oh my God, I want to go to like all the fancy stores and see the perfumes they have. And they had like every Tom Ford perfume, like just testers of them, just sitting out to try. And I've never smelled Lost Cherry. I've never smelled Bitter Peach. Um, so I was just in hog heaven. I was so excited to smell them. Even though like Tom Ford is a line that I've never necessarily like feel like I need those perfumes. I did get Black Orchid because they did actually have that in one of our stores here in the Midwest. I got to smell Bitter Peach. My friend I was with, I, I made him smell everything and he did not like this, but I loved it. It's peach, but it doesn't feel like, like a super bright, fresh peach. It feels like really ripe and it isn't super sweet. It feels somewhat syrupy, but not in a way that's sweet. That makes, it's hard to explain, like it just, but it feels like a nice juicy peach you can bite into. And then it's also has patchouli in it, which is a, a big part of it. Smelling it on a blotter, like it made me think of Angel. There's a little bit of like a kind of potpourri vibe to it. It To me, it felt even like a little witchy and maybe a little bit more mature. The Tom Ford travel sprays are so nice and they feel so luxurious that I don't really feel like I need to have like a big bottle. Um, for one thing, they're so overpriced, obviously. Even these are, but um, generally the reason I skip out on getting travel sprays is because oftentimes they're just so like thin and feel really breakable and they're ugly and like not that there's just not that experience you get that just feels good I, I like that I like the experience you get from having a, a, a bottle of perfume and I like that with the Tom Ford travel sprays you still get that experience I've been wearing this one a lot lately um, I've been really missing autumn, like I said, and I feel like this feels like the perfect autumn perfume. It's it's warm, it's cozy, it's enveloping, it, it definitely lasts. Um, I think it does have vanilla in it and it does have a slight sweetness. It's not that sweet. Um, this also to me has like a waxy smell to it. It does almost smell like a candle. It has like this waxy chalky especially as it wears. Um, so it doesn't really smell edible. The peach in here a little bit, but like, I feel like the more you wear it, the more chalky and waxy it gets. And then it just has this kind of slight spicy patchouli. It isn't like 
the patchouli, especially as I wear it, I don't get as much. When I really got it was when I smelled it on the blotter. I feel like it smells different on skin. When you spray it on clothes or on a blotter, you get more of the spiciness in the patchouli, which kind of sucks because that's what I really like about it. The chalky waxy part, I don't like as much, but I also do like that. I like, there's something kind of distant about it. You know, I've talked a lot about wanting to wear perfumes more for myself and less for other people. And I would always just, you know, as I said, want stuff that would be like sexy and likable and, and men would really like it. And to me, I don't view this one that way. I don't think it is. It's not like super sensual or horny. You know, I don't know that, I don't, but like, yeah, like, yeah, it doesn't have that quality to it. And I, I'm kind of getting to a place where like, I really want to lose that kind of wanting validation from men. And it's been fun kind of getting into other perfumes where that isn't such a big part of it of being sweet and yummy and edible and sexy and whatever. I'm just like moving into a, a new part of my life where I'm just kind of realizing the kinds of things that I really need to start focusing on with myself. And um, I think for a while, I wasn't doing that. And, and I think it came through in the kinds of perfumes that I generally would get excited about. I don't know. So I just, I really enjoyed this one. And yeah, I'm excited to have this, especially as we get into autumn. To me, this is like autumn in a bottle. Okay, the next perfume I'm gonna talk to you guys about is one that literally just arrived. I've been like super excited about getting this all day. Um, this is another one that I smelled in Washington. I'd always been curious about it, but never smelled it until I went to Washington because their Sephora's have Glossier. Our Sephora's don't. Glossier was like the first makeup I ever got into. I think it was a really good kind of like beginner friendly makeup to get into where you can't really overdo it and it's more natural and just easy. But yeah, here it is, I just opened it. I haven't smelled it since I was in Washington and I've just been super excited to get my hands on it. But this is basically pink pepper, iris, and I think ambroxan or something. It's, uh, this is one of those perfumes that's like marketed like smells different on everyone. It just smells like, it just takes what you smell like and makes it smell really good, blah, 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 which I feel like is complete bullshit. Like, I, I, I don't know, like I just don't, I think that's like a really good, useful marketing tool, but, but I think it's bullshit. When I smelled it, you know, what I got from it was just like this kind of spicy with the, the pink pepper and then just this kind of soft fluffy iris that does have kind of a pencil shavings vibes made me think of a little bit of like a library i don't know i love iris so much iris is my favorite flower and i just couldn't resist just having like a, a subtle soft everyday iris scent that is a little spicy it isn't super sweet like that kind of thing has just been appealing to me a lot lately. Yeah, it does. It smells like a library. It's just kind of like a papery iris. Um, sorry, my chair is really creaky. Again, like this is another perfume that to me, there's nothing like sensual about it. It's just like a kind of addicting smell. But yeah, I'm really excited to just start bathing in this. And then the last one I want to talk about, Serge Luton Jeu de Pou. Jeu de Pou. Joe de Pou. I don't know. I don't know how it's, it's definitely, I doubt it's Pou. I'm sorry for saying Pou. 
This one, basically, like, it smells like toast. It smells like, like, buttered toast. And I think it has apricot in it, which gives it maybe a slight, like, sweetness. Uh, maybe a slight creaminess. And every time I've worn this, it just, again, it's one of those perfumes that just feels so comforting and just makes me feel really happy. Because it's a little weird, it's, but it's just nice. This is one I really want to get my hands on, a full bottle. I, I know on the Serge Luton website, they have like a 300 full-size bottle of it, but it doesn't have a sprayer. And honestly, I would spend, I would pay 300 to get it if it had a sprayer, but it doesn't. But then you go on like Mercari and there are ones with sprayers, but they're like even more and they have less juice in them. So I don't understand why they don't still sell the sprayer ones on the Serge Luton website. I don't know what's going on with that, but... This is definitely one that I'm going to have, keep my eye out for because I really want to have it in my collection. It's just unique and lovely. It just, it makes me happy. I love it. I love Serge Luton's, dude. I would say that might be my favorite house at this point because I just feel like they're just really, really good perfumes and they're interesting and unique and still wearable, you know? Like my experiences with Floyd Orange and Feminite Dubois is that they're perfumes that aren't like too heavy, um, but they're still a little dirty. They're still elegant. They're still, there's a little bit of sexiness to them, um, but they're just like perfect. They just hit the right mark and and they still feel interesting and, and artful. But yeah, I would say that's kind of where I've been lately with perfume, the stuff I've been into and the stuff I've been wearing the most. What perfume have you guys been into? Are you excited for autumn and for like the more like heavier, spicier, warmer perfumes to be more in vogue again. Part of me is like feeling like maybe I'll start craving my more summery ones again since I've been generally wearing my more like autumn winter perfumes for like the last month or two but we shall see. Thank you for watching and I hope you guys have a good day. Bye.